What's going on everybody? I'm Jiffy Nano and in this video I want to talk about some of the stuff you guys need to know about Cyberpunk 2077. Really quick, I will not be going into hyper detail about any of these topics. I'm not an expert in the lore or details of the Cyberpunk universe, but I'm definitely interested in diving into some more of the details and research. That way I can do another video in the future. Today we're just going to go over the setting, the plot, and some of the RPG systems in the place that will dictate how you play. So let me know if you guys want to see another video going over some of the things I left out. Now that that's out of the way, let's get right into the basic setting and plot. Cyberpunk 2077 takes place in an alternate version of the future in one of the last great cities of the United States, Night City. After a massive social and economic depression in the mid-90s, the US government turned to mega corporations to keep the country from completely collapsing, but resulting in these mega corporations essentially having absolute control over the nation. This led to multiple wars between rivaling corporations, usually referred to as the corporate wars, leaving what was left of the United States in a dystopian shell of its former self, Night City being no different. You play as a mercenary for hire, usually referred to as a solo in this universe, just trying to climb your way up the social ladder. At the beginning of the game, you get to choose one of three life paths, Street Kid, Nomad, and Corpo. These backstory options for your character can give you different choices and responsive to different situations based on what you pick. For example, if you choose a Corpo, you'll know the tricks and setups that other Corpos use, like giving you a credit card with a virus on it. All of these life paths start off different but end up in the same situation to set you off in the main story. You get a job that would set you up for life, but the plan goes sideways and you end up left for dead with a dead rocker boy's consciousness stuck in your head, the one and only Johnny Silverhand, played by Keanu Reeves. The Street Kid Path starts you off in Haywood, one of the more dangerous districts in Night City, and home to a gang known as the Valentinos. You grew up here on the streets, you know the city well and how to handle yourself when it comes to gangs, but you're not too friendly with the police, having an obvious aversion to authority. This is the perfect zero to hero starting point and probably the one I would pick myself. The Nomad Path starts you outside the city. You grew up on the roads of the Badlands surrounded by your Nomad family. Nomads are traditional and value their cards and their family above everything else, and usually try to keep to themselves traveling in large convoys across the Badlands. Your family is in shambles and you think that Night City is the key to fixing it, so you set your sights there. Finally, the Corpo Path has you working for the largest corporation in the cyberpunk universe, Arasaka, as a counterintelligence agent. The other corporos are cutthroat and bloodthirsty, doing whatever it takes to keep or increase their status in the company, regardless of who or what gets in their way. You have finally fought and clawed your way high enough to reach the boardroom, but your boss sends you on an off-the-books, high-stakes job just to let you take the fall, resulting in them seizing your assets, leaving you with almost nothing. After you finish these intro quest lines, you'll be set off into the massive world of Night City, and from what we've heard, there's an insane amount to do in the world. Some previewers even saying that after their 16-hour early session, they feel like they've barely scratched the surface. Now that we're past some of the more plot-oriented stuff, I would like to mention that while this game is set up as an FPS, it is very much an RPG. The combat, hacking, driving, and everything is tied to the RPG systems and won't feel as good in the beginning as it will later in the game, leading me into the attributes, skills, and perks. There are five attributes in this game, body, intelligence, reflexes, technical, and cool. Body is for your HP, accuracy, melee damage, and stamina. Intelligence is for hacking proficiency, shortening hacking times, and reducing hacking difficulty levels. Reflexes increases your crit chance, evasiveness, and attack speed. Technical increases your armor, your ability to harvest loot and crafting. And lastly, cool is your ability to stay calm under pressure, helping with stealth, critical damage, and resistances. Each of these attributes has two or three skills tied to them, and each skill has a tree full of perks with a capstone perk. Some of these perks have multiple levels of investment, acting as passive abilities granting things like reduced fall damage or letting you shoot and sprint while carrying a body. There are 12 skills, with 20 perks each for a total of 240 perks. There is also a system called street cred that you have to level. This is somewhat like your reputation in game. As you increase your street cred, vendors will sell higher quality items and at lower prices. Street cred is usually earned by doing certain actions like side quests and bounties. These systems combined with the weapons and cyberware make for extremely deep character and playstyle customization and will definitely require more than one playthrough to explore all the options. And speaking of weapons and cyberware, we will talk about them next. There are six rarities of items in Cyberpunk. Ordinary, Unusual, Rare, Epic, Legendary, and Iconic. All weapons, cyberware, and items use this same rarity system. Cyberware are augmentations to your character that range from hidden weapons, the ability for your eyes to zoom, all the way to increased stamina and the ability to slow down your perception of time. To install cyberware, you have to go to a ripper dock in the world. These doctors slash engineers are scattered throughout Night City and require different levels of street cred to get higher quality and rarer cyberware. 
These body augmentations are one of the cornerstones of the cyberpunk universe, and it's rare to find someone without at least some kind of cyberware installed, including your enemies. It was recently confirmed that some enemies would even be able to slow time them for themselves, making them incredibly fast to the player. There are three kinds of cyberware. Active, which has to be executed by the player, triggered, which activates when a certain condition is met, and passive, which runs automatically once installed. There are various slots on the player's body, like arms, legs, eyes, and brain, that can all take some kind of cyberware, and I believe that it was said that once you've bought it, you can swap out your cyberware whenever you want, if not on the fly, then at least at a ripper dock. Weapon rarities work the same way as cyberware. You have to reach a certain street cred level to obtain higher quality weapons from vendors, but unlike cyberware, you should be able to craft and modify weapons yourself depending on your attributes. The usual types of weapons exist, such as SMGs, assault rifles, pistols, shotguns, and sniper rifles, but they are separated into three categories, power, smart, and tech. Power weapons are your conventional firearms, high power, and mostly reliable. These are usually the most common and the cheapest to acquire. Smart weapons are firearms that shoot small, bullet-sized guided rockets rather than normal bullets that auto-target into your enemies. These are a lot like Atlas weapons if you've ever played Borderlands 3. Tech weapons are electromagnetically powered with extremely high velocities, able to penetrate armor and cover like walls and barriers. Lastly, we also have melee weapons. There are various melee weapons you can find in the game, ranging from baseball bats all the way to katanas with a superheated edge. There are even some melee weapons that are hidden inside your body through the use of cyberware, like the mantis blades that fold out of your arms. There's also clothing with different stats and consumables, and a limited inventory system so you can't just carry everything on your person at all times, but you can drop stuff off in your car, which shares a stash with your home. Speaking of cars, you'll be able to collect a plethora of cars in this game, and they all can be summoned using your cell phone, much like calling your horse in the Witcher games. These vehicles can be purchased or acquired through quests and relationships, and it's been confirmed that you can street race in Cyberpunk, so I'm sure there's a way to win a sick ride through those too. You can also steal cars by hacking them or by force from random drivers, but keep in mind that you won't be able to just steal cars whenever you want. This being an RPG at its core, you will need to level your intelligence and hacking skills to steal higher tier cars, which lets me segue into hacking. Hacking is another cornerstone of the cyberpunk universe. Instead of the internet as we know it, the cyberpunk version is just known as the net and usually is browsed in a simulated 3D environment, similar to VR, but more along the lines of Matrix or Sword Art Online. The hackers in this universe are usually referred to as netrunners and use the net to cause havoc and do jobs much like mercs do outside of the net. Your character can use hacking to take control of gun turrets, gain intel about areas, open doors, and even set off grenades in your enemy's pockets. There are two kinds of hacking we know of so far, targeted hacks and quick hacks. Most of the hacking has to be done by interfacing with an object with your cyber deck and usually do some kind of minigame to finish the hack. Quick hacks can be done from a distance and cost cyber deck memory to execute, much like spells and mana in other games. The quick hacks seem to be more offensive and designed to be used against your enemies to do things like set them on fire or turn off their optical implants leaving them blind for a short time. So I want to know what you guys think of these systems. I see a lot of potential for different builds and playstyles, and recent reports have said that there's quite a bit of replayability with all the different choices you can make and this gets me very excited. We have also seen some reports from early preview builds that the game is a bit slower than marketing leads you to expect, but not in a bad way. Like I've mentioned a few times, this game is an RPG first and an FPS second, so there might not be as much action as people expect, and the action that you do get into will be slower. CDPR has been adamant that enemies will not be bullet sponges, but those who have played it say that they are a bit beefier than you would expect, with body shots doing less damage than headshots, and headshots not always killing in one hit. It's also worth noting that one of these previewers mentioned that unlike The Witcher and Fallout, combat is not baked into travel and you'll likely won't find much conflict when moving from waypoint to waypoint. They compared it to GTA in this aspect, where you can just drive to your destination or do off the path activities for hours without even drawing your weapon, but if you want to find some action it's never far off. But the similarities to GTA pretty much stops there. So are you all excited for Cyberpunk? I'm kind of reserving my hype for when I get my hands on it. I highly doubt the game will disappoint, but I'd rather not overhype myself either way. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you liked the video, consider leaving a like. If you didn't, go ahead and dislike. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing and hitting that bell so you see my future uploads. I plan to cover Cyberpunk as much as I can when it comes out, but that means playing through it, and that's a lot of playtime. So if you want to see that, check out my Twitch channel, link in the description. I'd love to see you there and talk more about RPGs and looters. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.